hey guys what's up welcome back to my channel if you are new here welcome if you are a returning subscriber welcome back i missed you today i am going to be talking to you about a very old story that has been one of my favorites esta historia when i heard about it i couldn't get it out of my head for days I feel like this is a good story para ir calentando for spooky season. <gasps> que ya mero es. I'm so excited for my merch. Y'all better be ready y no me dejen plantada. It's gonna be our first spooky drop ever. So all my spooky queens better come through. I'm gonna fill up my drink. I'm so obsessed with this cup. Lo compré en la Marshalls and I'm gonna drink my Prime. This one is in the flavor Meta Moon and it's so good, pero me gusta con mucho hielo. What I love about Prime is that it has coconut water. It's 10% coconut water. And I feel like coconut water is so refreshing. This is refreshing as fuck. Mm -mm -mm. The flavors are melting on my tongue. So we have so many things to be excited about. Spooky content, content with my parents, and my spooky merch. La verdad, estoy bien emocionada y agradecida con Dios para darme la energía to keep going. Alrighty, guys. So I'm going to start with this story and I'm going to start doing my makeup. So grab your snacks, your blanket, whatever you need, and get ready for this story because... This is a story that you're going to remember. Así que esta historia is about two French sisters. This story happened a long time ago. So I might have some info that is not correct. Porque les juro, mire un chingo de videos y casi en todos esos videos... There was different information, but I did my best. Yo hice mi proyecto, hice mi reporte. I have my notes here. Like for real, I literally write down pages full of notes. Porque aquí les quiero dar todo el spooky chisme. So this is a well-known story from the 1930s. It was very popular. It's about two French sisters. And before they were born, su vida ya era un desmadre. Así que había un señor que se llamaba Gustav y una señora que se llamaba Clemens. Gustav was an alcoholic and he was abusive. And Clemens era una señora que era un desmadre. Le valía todo a la doña. She was known to be a bad mom. Basically, to her daughters, she was never motherly. No les enseñó amor, no les enseñó modales. No les enseñó nada. Es más, ella ni quería cuidar a sus hijas. But I'm going to get into that in a bit. When Gustav was super in love with Clemens, there was rumors that Clemens was cheating with her boss. Y también los papás de Gustav, they didn't like Clemens. Había un chingo de rumores de ella. I'm gonna start with my foundation. And by the way, if you guys are getting ready, let's get ready together. Y espero que queden bien perras. Así que la pareja era un desmadre. And Clemens ended up getting pregnant. And when she got pregnant, there were still rumors going around about her cheating with her boss. Pero el bebé sí era de Gustav. Y pues cuando se embarazó, they decided to get married. Because you know how it was back in the day. People felt forced to be married when they had kids. Um, I guess you can say they got married because of social standards. Y porque imagínate, toda la gente de su town iba a estar, mira, se embarazó y ni está casada. Si sí, así es la gente todavía. Ahora imagínate en esos tiempos. Y cuando se casaron, Gustav was like, we should move away and start fresh. You know, like away from all the rumors y todos los chismes. 
And he also said that como para ver si era cierto about the cheating rumors and Clemens le armó un pinche pancho. She was like, no, I don't want to move away. She started threatening to commit She would cry saying that she didn't want to move away, which confirmed that the rumors were true. Si mi ceja está media madreada de aquí, es porque me corté el pelo, because it was bugging me. Cuando me pintaba la ceja, los pelitos se caían para abajo. Do you know what I mean? I'm gonna go in with my brow pomade by Benefit. I've been loving this lately. I was using a lot of eyebrow pencils, but I forgot how good this is. So Clemence was cheating on Gustav and she had her first daughter ever, which was Emilia. Emilia was born on February 12 of 1902. Y después pasó el tiempo and Clemence ended up getting pregnant again with her second daughter. This time when she was pregnant, she decided to actually move away and start fresh. A lot of people think that esta vez si se animó to move away because she basically thought that there were zero chances now of her having something serious with her boss. Como ya tenía dos hijas, she was like, fuck it, might as well settle down. So then they moved away and she gave birth to her second daughter, Christine. And that was on March 8 of 1905. When she had the two little girls, Clemens got so tired of being a mom. She felt like she couldn't handle it. So she ended up giving Christine away to Christine's aunt. Era bien cabrona, dude. Like, le valía madre. I don't even know why she kept having kids if she couldn't handle it and she just wanted to give them away. Porque, pobres niñas. Nomás las trajo al mundo para sufrir. It sounds fucked up, but es la neta. And then after that, Clemens got pregnant once again. It was with another baby girl and her name was Leah. She had Leah on September 15 of 1911. And during that time, Clemens found out that Gustav had molested their oldest daughter, Emilia. Clemens immediately divorced Gustav and she didn't divorce him because she was upset at him molesting Emilia, but more at the fact that she felt betrayed. She felt betrayed because she believed, she truly believed that Emilia, who was 10 years old at that time, seduced her dad. How is a 10 year old? I know, dude. How is a 10 year old going to seduce her dad? And that is so fucked up for Emilia. So, como un castigo, la mandó a un orphanage. Y ya después, after that, Clemens gave Leah to an uncle and sent Christine to the same orphanage where Emilia was at. So, in that moment, Leah was with an uncle. And Christine and Emilia were at an orphanage. And that orphanage was known to be scary as fuck. Especially back in the day, orphanages were known to treat kids very bad. I'm pretty sure you guys have heard some scary stories about orphanages or pictures. Yeah, they looked pretty creepy back in the day. I'm going to be putting the name of the orphanage here because I can't pronounce it. Y cuando Emilia creció to be the legal age, ella se metió a un convento de monjas and she became a nun. A lot of people believe that she wanted to be a nun because the abuse that she went through with her dad. I know, dude, pinche viejo hijo de su puta madre. Que pinche asco, la neta. Y también asco de la mamá for blaming her daughter. So Emilia became a nun and Christine wanted to follow her big sister's footsteps. And when Clement saw that her daughter wanted to be a nun as well, en chinga la sacó y la quería poner a trabajar. Le dijo que ella debería de trabajar 
en vez de ser monja because she was way smarter than Emilia. To be honest, I just think she said that porque le tenía coraje a su propia hija. And other than that, because Clemens wanted to keep the money. People mentioned that Christine was very good at cleaning and cooking because of being at the orphanage, she got experience. So she ended up getting jobs as a domestic worker. Clemens saw that Christine was good at that and was like, I'm gonna put her to work. Christine made really good food. She would always do a good job wherever she worked at, but she was known to be rude, distant, and cold. Clemens was putting Christine to work and keeping all of her hard earning money. Dicen que la cambiaba mucho de trabajos. Como si encontraba un trabajo donde pagaban más, en chinga la cambiaba. She was known to always be changing jobs. And you know how Leah was staying with her uncle? Well, that uncle ended up passing away. Clemens didn't waste no time and put Leah to work with Christine. And once they started working together, they got very close. Especially porque nunca habían tenido una amistad como hermanas. Las tres casi no crecieron juntas. So that was very new to them. And they had so much fun. Dicen que las dos siempre querían trabajar juntas. Así tipo si en un trabajo una compañía solo contrataba a una, la otra no quería trabajar si el trabajo fuera sin su hermana. Y en esta parte yo dije, ah, pues qué bueno, se cuidan mucho como hermanas. Hey. Well, this is when things get interesting. In 1926, Christine landed on a very good job, which was in a house of a retired lawyer. And the job was for her to be a maid and a cook. Christine worked there for a few months and they were super happy with her work. The lawyer's name was Monsor Lancelin, and I am so sorry if I'm mispronouncing any of the names, but I am trying my best. The wife's name was Leoni, and they had a daughter named Genevieve. Y creo que también tenían otra hija, pero ella, she had already moved away with her husband. And after months of doing her job as a servant there, Christine ended up convincing them to hire her sister, Leah. The girls would work so much. They would work 14 hours a day. Basically, casi todo el día, but it was a really good job because they had offered them a room to live in. And it was a heated room, which was a pretty big luxury for back in the day. También les daban de comer, and this job was way better than other jobs that they had. The lawyer, Monsor Lancelin, was very happy con el trabajo de las muchachas también. Porque eran calmaditas. They were known to be a little cold, distant, and rude. Pero aparte de eso, no tenían vicios. They wouldn't go out dancing. They wouldn't drink. They were very to themselves. Y trabajadoras. Calm, quiet, obedient. You get it. They say that the girls would go out if it was going to church. And that sometimes they would go to a local fortune teller. And I thought it was pretty weird that they said that in that local fortune teller, they told the girls that in another life they were husband and wife. So I guess they were lovers in a past life. Pretty fucking weird to think about. I love doing um, graphic eyeliner and I'm using eyeshadow this time. So I guess graphic eyeshadow. I think it looks pretty good, and if it looks chueco, ni modo, me vale madre. They ended up getting very close to his wife, Leoni, and his daughter, Genevieve. Dicen que había un punto where they started seeing Leoni as a motherly figure, y que Leoni hasta les aconsejó to not be sending money to their mom because that was their hard working money. Yes, guys, at this point, 
they were still sending all of their income to their mom. So Leoni was giving them advice y les decía que no se dejaran. The sisters started bashing Clemens, their mother. So Leoni was being an eye opener to a point where they even started referring Clemens as the woman instead of calling her mom or mother. So the girls started having a really good relationship with Leoni until I read some stuff saying that she was depressed but she wasn't diagnosed. Pero pues she started being very extra with the girls. Era más exigente. She would be like, oh, you missed this part, go clean it. Se estaba portando bien perra, como que se quería aprovechar de ellas. If they wouldn't do something right, she would cut it out of their check. She would also wear gloves and check if there was dust on top of the cabinets. And if there was dust, she would make them do everything all over again. También, I also heard que si había un papel en el piso o algo en el piso, she would make them get on their knees and pick it up. Así que, quién sabe qué le pasó, pero salieron en bronca. Other than that, the sisters also said that Leoni was starting to physically abuse them when they wouldn't do something right. She started hitting them and pinching them. So they were getting really tired of this. To a point where the sister told the other sister that the next time that Leoni would try to do something like that, hell was going to break loose. Meaning that she was going to stand up for herself. I love bronzing my forehead. I feel like it makes such a big difference. So the sisters were working there for already seven years. Now, the day of February 2 of 1933 came. Christine was 27 and Leah was 21. In that day, the family was going to go to a dinner. The two sisters were home. The power went out because Christine was trying to use an iron. And apparently, it blew out a fuse. So the whole house was dark. The two sisters were alone because Leoni and Genevieve had gone out shopping and then I'm not too sure exactly why they went home. But I think they were supposed to be home until later. Pero llegaron pretty unexpected. And Leoni got so mad because the power went out. People say that this was already a problem in that house. That the power kept going out. But apparently that night Leoni got very upset. And she tried hitting Christine. Christine already had enough. So she grabbed a jug and she smashed her head with it. I know, dude. Aquí es cuando las cosas empiezan a ponerse peor. Genevieve saw that Christine le pegó a su mamá. So se metió a defender a su mamá. Which as she should... I know this whole situation está bien culera, but I mean... And when Christine saw that Genevieve was sticking up for her mother, Christine went up to Genevieve y le sacó los ojos. She then went to go get a hammer and knives and ordered Leah to do the same to Leoni. Que le saque los ojos también. So guys, this, this is already fucking crazy. Like... The fact que le sacaron los ojos con sus propias manos, I'm like, how? With the knives, the two sisters were slicing them and stabbing them. And with the hammer, they were smashing their heads. Guys, it was all fucking crazy. There was blood everywhere. They say that this whole torture lasted 30 minutes. Which is a long ass time because they wanted to make sure that they ended up dead. And it gets even weirder than this. When they were dead, like for sure dead, ya que les hicieron un chingo de cosas, las prepararon. 
Las prepararon como si las iban a cocinar. Why? I don't fucking know. But Christine compared it to cooking them as if they were rabbits. She compared it to cooking a rabbit from a recipe that she had found in a cookbook from the 1900s. They also lifted their skirts and started slicing. Slicing them down there too. I know my eyeliner probably looks like shit, but whatever. Um, I'm gonna fix it right now. Pero después, dude, it got even worse. It, it just keeps getting worse, dude. They rubbed blood all over their bodies. And I heard that it was Genevieve's period blood. So they got her period blood and rubbed it all over their bodies. Y pues no sé, he leído que era sangre de periodo y también he leído que era sangre de ellas. Because there was blood everywhere in general. Like tipo, they wouldn't stop smashing their heads with a hammer. Like tras, tras, tras. I'm just like, dude, okay, I get it. Si la señora se pasó de verga, pero eso ya es mucho, ¿no? Like, fuck. And then, after all that, Christine and Leah got ready for bed and went to bed like nothing. Now, remember that Genevieve and Leoni were supposed to go to a dinner? Well, el esposo de Leoni, Mansour Lancelin, was waiting for them. Y se le hizo raro porque ya eran las seis y media and they wouldn't show up. So he decided to go to the house and see if everything was good. When he got there, he thought it was pretty fucking weird that all the lights were off in the house. And there was just the light of a candle on a bedroom upstairs. He had a bad feeling so he ended up calling the police the police ended up going through the back of the house because they thought someone was in there keep in mind that the house was dark so they went inside with flashlights and when they came across the stairs they saw a shiny white marble looking thing on the floor they flashed the light on it a bit more and it was an eyeball. These sisters tenían un desmadre. They ended up finding the bodies and they saw that their heads were smashed, their legs were sliced. I saw a picture, I don't know if it was the real picture, but they were very sliced. Dicen que sus cuerpos de Genevieve y su mamá were unrecognizable. They had missing teeth, missing hair and head parts. And remember how they had sliced them down there too? And their skirts were up? Pues when they took the crime scene photos, they had to put the skirts a little more down. Porque dicen que de verdad se miraba horrible. Como tenían todo ahí abajo. The police and Monsor Lancelin were now worried about the two sisters. They thought they were going to be dead as well. So they kept looking for them all over the house. Hasta que quedaba un cuarto. Y era el cuarto de ellas. When they got to that room, the door was locked and they kept knocking y nadie abría la puerta. They ended up unlocking the door and when they went inside of the room, the two sisters were there, hugging each other in the same bed, shivering and wearing only their bathrobes. Other people say that they were naked and hugging each other. But the first thing that they said is, we were expecting you. I'm just like, who knows what the truth is? If they were naked, that's fucking weird. But they quickly admitted to everything that they had done. They claimed that it was self-defense. They say that right next to them, when they opened the door of the room, 
There was a stool donde estaba el hammer. El hammer que usaron para matarlas. Full of hair and chunks of like their head. So of course they quickly arrested them and they went to jail immediately. Surprisingly, a lot of people from that town they felt bad for the sisters because they believed that Madame Leoni, la señora, las estaba maltratando. La verdad, quién sabe qué es la verdad because Leoni and Genevieve didn't survive to tell their truth. Some people say that the sisters went straight to the eyes cuando empezaron a atacar a Leoni y a Genevieve because maybe they saw something that they didn't want nobody to see. So when they took the sisters to jail, there was rumors that the sisters were going crazy because they wanted to be together. They kept insisting to see each other and Christine even said once that she was starting to get that feeling like that night when she was about to murder Leoni and Genevieve. Así que Christine ya no hallaba qué decir o qué inventar para ver a Leah. They ended up seeing each other and of course it was supervised but the people that were there they say that the way they would communicate, it wasn't like a sister type of relationship. They would communicate like if they were partners. Like if there had been some sexual relationship between them. Hasta dicen that there was unbuttoning involved when they saw each other. También muchas personas piensan that Christine was the dominant one since she was way older than Leah. And I mean, most of the time, Christine was always the one insisting to be with Leah when they were in jail. Porque las tenían separadas. And the weird thing about this is que les hicieron exámenes y todo. Y todo regresaba like if they were sane and knew what they were doing. Now, I don't know if that is completely true because I do feel like back in the day, they weren't good enough to diagnose someone and I mean, they would sweep mental health under the rug. Pero quien sabe, yo nomás le estoy platicando la historia. Later in September of 1933, their trial had started. Leah ended up getting 10 years of hard labor because they believed that she was heavily influenced by Christine. And Christine, she actually got a death sentence and then they switched it to life in jail. They ended up switching her to a mental prison and she ended up dying there because she didn't want to eat and didn't want any help. She didn't want to do nothing because all she wanted was to be with Leah. Así que al final se murió de esto. No sé cómo decir la palabra, pero aquí la voy a poner. And then on May 18th of 1937, Leah got out of jail early. She ended up serving only eight years. Y la sacaron temprano porque se portaba súper bien. She ended up getting a job in a hotel as a housekeeper. Leah actually lived a long life. Y hay una foto de ella en 2001, before she passed away. Les voy a poner la foto aquí. And now the two sisters are buried together, which is how they always wanted to be. Guys, I know this story is for sure disturbing because it includes incest. Y la verdad, que pinche asco. But a lot of people feel bad for these sisters porque no tuvieron una vida fácil. Su mamá nunca les enseñó amor. Yo creo nunca les enseñó lo que era tener una hermana. Some people also think that these girls had a disorder. That may be the case. But this whole case is just so fucked up in every way. I also read a comment that mentioned Something about that the two sisters had a symbol engraved in their skin, a satanic symbol. 
Now, I don't know if that's true, but that's a small conspiracy. What do you think about this story? Do you think they had a disorder? Do you think they were just weird? Or I don't know. What do you think though? Let me know in the comments down below. And yeah, guys, this is the crazy and gruesome story about the Papin sisters. Papin, Papan, or Papan. No sé cómo chingados decirlo. I'm just gonna say Pepino or Pepina. That's rude, huh? That's rudeness. I'm not gonna do that. Also, this is how my makeup turned out. What do we think? I'm gonna get my hair done soon because it's almost my birthday. Ya sé que tengo la raíz hasta acá. So I'm pretty fucking excited. And again, I am so excited for my merch. All right, guys. So this is it for today's video. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up down below. Turn on your notifications so you can get notified for the next time I post. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.